listening to It's Complicated with your hosts, Jennifer Golden and Lauren Leonelli. Hello, Master Daters. Welcome back for another episode of It's Complicated. The struggle is real when you're dating in the city. I'm Jen. And I'm not Jen. Still. Surprise. I can't do it. Every week I think I'm going to say I'm Lauren, and I am Lauren, but I'm also not Jen, and I (laughs) just can't say I'm Lauren. Every time it's a surprise. I don't know if I'm going to do it or not, and I always default to not Jen. (laughs) I think now we're like in such a, like, I just feel like it's a rhythm with it. it. You can't. I know. It's, I can't. I think people might be confused if you ever did say that you are Lauren at this point. It's just cuter to be not Jen. (laughs) Anyway, you aren't. And guys, it takes a village. We bring you this show weekly with our stories, our tips, our expert guests to help you navigate the complicated world of dating and relationships. So help us in the podcast world by doing your part. Yes, find us at It's Complicated Podcast on iTunes and rate and comment and tell a friend. Wasn't there like a um, an old grocery store uh, slogan that was like, Ralph's, tell a friend. It was. I'll think of somebody. Please know. tell me it was. It was in the Bay Area. It was Alpha Beta. Tell a friend. What is Alpha Beta? Alpha Beta was like a star. Anyway, it just brought me back. Okay. So you guys do like like Alpha <laughs> Beta used to tell you to do. And tell a friend. Yeah. Share. Because it's so helpful for us. It shows that we have a loyal and growing audience. And it helps bring us sponsors that we can then give things to you. Like, hello, do you want some giveaways? Can I get a whoop whoop for a giveaway? Whoop whoop. I mean, yeah, we're going to give you promo codes and all the things. And it helps keep our show running and it keeps the lights on and it helps keep being this village going so we can help you date in your dating village. Yes, guys, speaking of dating in the village. Today, our village is discussing sex myths, juggling partners, and when to say goodbye to a fuck boy. A uh, goodbye. Goodbye. With our guest, Zach Peter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just cannot wait. But you guys, just in case you uh, didn't know, Zach Peter is a published writer, pop culture commentator, podcast host, and health activist. Basically all of the all cool things that you could possibly be. The coolest. Um, he's not your average green juice drinking millennial either. And oh, yes, he is not your average millennial. There are so many reasons why. Uh, As a writer, he has published a total of four books uh, with work featured on Yahoo, Men's Health, Bustle, People, and more. And in between college and martinis. My favorite. Mm -hmm. You can catch his signature wit and gift of gab as host and producer of the hit weekly podcasts, Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter, and Hashtag Adulting Life Hacks to get your shit done. Together. Together, not done. And done. Together. Both, both, both things. It. Just get it together, people, and just yeah. listen to that podcast. Like, I need to get it together. together. I mean, we all do. <laughs> he currently serves as the executive director for Jenny McCarthy's Autism Foundation Generation Rescue and can be regularly seen on Pop Sugar and Maria Menounos' After Buzz TV network. You guys have heard of it. I think you have. Mm-hmm. Just and he, guess. Yeah, he often works as a regular event host, moderator, at various wellness and culture events throughout the country and covers an array of topics from buzzy health trends to pop culture, celebrity news and gossip, all the things. Yeah, and his accolades also include being named one of 2019's That Inspire by Examiner.com, being awarded Outstanding Youth Volunteer by the Association of Fundraising Professionals, and a two-time WEGO Health nominee for the Hilarious Health Activist Award. Well, he is hilarious, and he is a health activist, so that's a pretty special award, I think. I think so. And, And, yeah, he might be just plain Zach to you all. But to us, he's our cutest GBF, and soon to be a master dater, like everybody else listening here. For the second time, welcome to the studio, Zach. Hi. Hi. Ola. Ola. Thanks for joining us. you guys. How's Mm -hmm. How's your drink? Do you like it? My drink is good. It's almost gone now. Well, oh, don't you worry. Cars. We've got more of that. Oh my gosh. Waiting Blondies by Jenny McCarthy. What? Where did you guys get that from? And why would we have that here? OMG. Lauren, why don't you tell us about our beverage? Well, before we get into this whole thing about fuckboys and about when to call it quits with that and sex myths, because we're going to need a drink for that. We are drinking our nightcap called the Zacta Soda. <laughs> That's right, guys. 
Oh my god. This vodka lemonade mixture, we added the qua, of course, because duh, like we have to do it. The, the bubbles have to be there. Mm -hmm. It's just a must. And it does, does it not make it very good? This is legit what I drink every night. I have the blondies and I actually use lime liqueur. Okay. But, oh. but that's because that's what was on sale at Target. But <laughs> if you did lemon, you can up the lemon factor in that here. That might be like a little too much lemon. It's a no. vodka lemonade mixture. But I think any liqueur, if you're down, could totally work. You could do a coconut one and make it tropical. Mm -hmm. <gasps> you know what actually might be good one with this one too? The, uh... Oh my god, I was gonna say the coconut one, but then I was like, wait, she just said that. Yeah, well, uh, I need to get my shit together. You, know, it's a, you need to listen <laughs> like, to sounds fucking like an echo. Zach's podcast, which we were also on. But anyway, you guys, this is special because this is uh, from Generation Rescue, okay? I feel which, special too. <laughs> yeah, this vodka is Jenny McCarthy's organization, organization, and that Zach is obviously near and dear to and worked for. And it's. Um, Basically, if you don't know anything about it, it's dedicated to children with autism spectrum disorders and it provides guidance and support for, and medical treatment directly to improve the child's quality of life and the families in, in need that are involved because it affects everybody. So um, while, like we said, this organization is near and dear to Zach's heart, vodka is also near and dear to our heart. So it makes sense that we drank this drink with you and we mixed Laquan to make it sparkly and fun. And why not call it a Zach de Soda? Because duh. Well, Stop. and like my thing is like hangover free cocktails and this is hang well sort of hangover free vo vodka as long as you don't drink the whole bottle because it's oh. also made with coconut water so you stay hydrated yeah. and it's made with like natural lemon so and there's not a bunch of junk in it. We added more water so mm. that helps. Extra, extra. hydrating. Because mm -hmm. we're thirsty. extra. Never Never thirsty. Nobody likes a thirsty person. No. No thirsty bitches. No not thirsty us. bitches. Not cute. Mm -mm. Um, so... Uh, what else is not cute is wedding planning not cute I feel like I talk about this every week and it's probably a little annoying but guess what I'm fucking annoyed too <laughs> so it's fine uh, we're you know um sounds complicated yeah it's very complicated um but so that's all still happening and um you know it we're getting maybe a little closer to speaking to wedding planners and, and seeing if Mexico is a thing but there was something interesting. Last week we had a guest named Erin, and she said something about um, her husband at, or he was to be her future husband at the time. They used to talk dream together, she said. And when she explained that, she meant like they would say, I want this in the future, or I want this many kids, or this is what a kind of house I want. And so she- Wait, can I tell you what I thought she meant when she said that? I thought they meant like fell asleep and dreamt together. Like their dreams could jo like co-joined, conjoined? Whatever yeah. that word, they went together. Like they and they're lucid dream together, or right? Something. And I was like, oh my god, is that a married person thing, or is that how you know someone's your soulmate? Like if you people, jump from your dream to their dream, that's so like. Or how people, inception. yeah, like people say like, oh, when I'm learning a language, if you start to dream speaking in the other language, that means you've really learned the language. Like I thought this that was a thing too. I was yeah. like, what the fuck is she doing, dreaming with this guy? Like, how is that happening? What she meant was, <laughs> is that that's what she called dreaming together, like saying their dreams out loud. Like goals and plans yeah. and oh, hopes yeah. and wishes. I was thinking she was like on mushrooms. Yeah, well, See? I was confused too. But Up then I thought, what a cute thing to say. And I realized that everyone does it. And I think it's got fun to do with your friends or with your significant other. And James and I did it. We went to Newport Beach and we were like looking around at houses and we're thinking like, oh, wouldn't this be fun to get an Airbnb for something? And then we took it a step further and we're driving through the fancy neighborhoods and we're like, yeah, th this house, oh, I could live here. And then now on this whole new kick of like taking his business a step further to like make that happen and think, so it was, we were dreaming out. It was nice. It was nice that we dreamt together. It's fun to do. And I think if you don't do it with your friends or your partner, or whoever you should, even alone, you can do it. But I think it's nice I mean, to be aware. this sounds like an ad for like a masturbator. Like you guys should do this all together. <laughs> oh, like do a, it with yourself. Do it with your spouse. Oh, group group masturbation. Oh, I like yeah. That. Oh, like a masturbating tool. <laughs> yeah, masturbate. I like to dream. Run, <laughs> I mean, it's, it could be the same thing. Like it's if right. we played back that audio with like a jingle to it and then plugged a product at the end of it, like it would be perfect. Oh well, you can use it if you'd like. <laughs> we should maybe make a masturbating tool together. This is a dating and relationship podcast, so it yeah. makes sense. Sex with Emily. Call us. Yeah. Yes. That can work. Or we'll just see you Saturday. But yeah. whatever. Um, <laughs> so, bye. Um, uh, so, speaking of Mexico, mm -hmm. like you're planning a wedding there, I just booked my big trip of the year there. Again, as I mentioned, I'm going to Tulum 
with uh, my childhood friend Rebecca. We went last year, was wonderful, and we were trying to find a place to go again this year, and that just made the most sense because it's sort of like equidistant. We found great flights that were She's direct. on the East Coast, yeah, and, and you're on the West Coast, and that's one of the things we thought of that about East Coast Central family, ish. West Coast family for a wedding. Yeah. It's like, in the, it's like kind of under Texas-ish. Yes. So, in fact, last year I flew and I took the red eye to Houston, went from Houston to uh, Cancun. Anyway, I don't recommend taking a layover to Cancun because then you get in a van for another two hours after going through customs and an assortment oh. of other annoying things that happen along the way. It's like but then you go on a date that you don't want to be on. Oh, for like stuff. eight hours. Trapped. And maybe more because just you have to get to the airport. Wow. I, thank God this year I have global entry. It's a whole different ball She's game fancy now. now. I am so fancy. <gasps> so. There should be like a global entry VIP dating status. Where something. you meet in like the bar at the airport or something because we and both have global entry. You're only allowed entry. to get into this dating area if you're like top tier dater. Well, and you know only why? After a you have time. Of you have time to go there because you have global entry and well, like you just watch the other people wait in line. Like, see, hey. but I don't know about that because oh. that just sounds like you're like dating still too much. single and you're like trying really True. hard. True. Good point. Oh. Well, we'll have to be. I am a single a entry. Professional harder. dater just sounds like yeah, it's like you're still unsuccessful. single. Unsuccessful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. True. Good point. Well, well, we'll work either way. So I do have global entry and I am going to Mexico and I'm psyched about it because now we're like experts in Tulum because we went last year and like are both really big planners. So we like know exactly what we're going to do this year and where we're not going to go again and where we're going to go this time and all of the things. So booked it. Very happy. It's in the calendar. I have something to look forward That's to. That's fun. I have other trips for like just work trips and things. And then your wedding, and then so like I just love knowing what's in the calendar, what I, I have to save money for, what is what I need clothing for, what's yeah, approaching. Well, that is so important. What I'm doing with mochi. There's a lot of planning involved, so like I love just like popping it into the calendar. So I'm happy that's there. Also, um, had a very relaxing weekend, including a day date. Um, wow. I yep, that was a brunch. Had a brunch date. How was that? Um, it was. Did you feel fun. romantic on the brunch date? Because a lot of times, like night and alcohol makes it feel a little more romantic. Did it still feel that way? So it's a little weird because it is daylight. I wouldn't recommend a brunch date for your first date. I would say that's a cute second date mm -hmm. to do like real life together. And like so, basically, what we did is we went to brunch and then like we had mimosas at brunch. We shared food. It was cute. Then we like walked around and like strolled, but I would say not to do that as a first date. Okay. I think a dinner and like nighttime is a yeah. little more romantic than do a daytime just to see how you are as like walks of life in daylight yeah. and how you can like stroll together because I love strolling. So that's that. But then also, also known as bopping. Oh, I do bop around, but mm. bopping happens faster. So like when I wear a bopping dress, I'm going places at a more rapid speed. And I have to like be in something that's flowy and like it's she, just versatile. She literally says that, Zach. Well, that uh, oh, what are we doing today? I should probably wear a bopping around dress. I'm like, what in the fuck is that? <laughs> it's like a real thing for her. Like she thinks everyone else knows what she's talking about. And I mean, I can. Guess, I have a podcast. They should know now. I can mm. guess, but like <laughs> also bopping. Bopping's different than strolling. Definitely, strolling's leisurely. Bopping is like an agenda. Gotta get places. Bopping just sounds like very like on ecstasy. What is going on here? You just asked if <laughs> our former guest is to accomplish with we're not on drugs unless Zach is maybe he is but we don't know. We'll get there. I think he's high on life. Anyway, I was this weekend because I felt like it was a long weekend and it wasn't, but that's how Ooh. relaxed I was because I thought on Saturday that the next day was Monday. But I had Sunday, so I was like, what? Oh my god, I that's so good. Too, and I like saw family. We went on a four mile hike for my cousin's birthday. I also came up with an adult an adulting dream plan of my own. Ooh. Mm. So I gave myself a deadline. We all know I'm 34. But if I am still single by the time I'm 36 and not like cohabitating with somebody and doing like the things that you think like buying a home together and doing those things, I am going to buy myself a vacation home which I will rent out as a rental property. I will acquire some equity. I will also have my family stay, stay there, there from time they, to yes, time. that's nice. I will escape there. I will adult all on my own. I think it's great. I almost Thank did that you. a couple years ago, but it was hard to get a loan. Well, I am going to go through the approval process but and do see it, what's but yeah, left. But 
It's that's probably not really that hard. Your life. I know. I'm gonna probably in Palm Springs. I Gosh, looked at houses already. Right. Oh, so so fun. bye. And if you so want to stay at my place, find me on Airbnb. And they're like mid-century exactly. century modern, so super cute. Palm Springs. So cute. And I'm sure one of our guests is probably an interior decorator somewhere. So I'll find one. Or to we do could it. just get one. I would like to call the Fab Five. In fact, I've been on mm. Queer Eye. Oh kick. my God. In fact, yes. I finished all three seasons. I could cry because I have no more Fab Five, and I'm like. Ugh. I loved the first one. I didn't see this one. I haven't seen this one yet, but it's just such a great you idea. You need to, to stop everything else you're doing. Well, we're going to stop everything we're doing right now because we have, and we really want to ask you some serious dating questions. We just need your hashtag oh, adulting advice right now. Um, and your no filter advice because both of yeah. those things go together. Yeah, we love your Like no a lovely advice. relationship. No, yes. And I tell people like with the two shows, like adulting is the one that you listen to like in the morning when you have your coffee and you're like trying to get your day started and you want to be productive. And then hashtag no filter is what you listen to like when you get home, you kick your shoes off, you pour yourself a glass of wine and you're like, I want to laugh, but I also like want to take away at the end of this too. Totally. Because you're still giving tidbits of helpful information. And you're still listening to me all fucking day long. I love it. What more could you ask for? Morsels of delight. Um, Okay. Very important question. Singles or taken? Or Or it's complicated. Um, Very single at the moment. I don't think there's anything complicated about how single I am. But what's very mean? Very single versus like single. Very single is like there is not a real prospect. There hasn't been in like the past six years. I have not made it to like a third date in a really long time. Like it's like hardcore. Third, I haven't now, been on a second date. do you think that that is, I'm not, I know you're a very uh, self-reflective, responsible human, but how much responsibility do you take in the lack of third date? Um, I'm starting to recognize more and more that the responsibility is kind of falling onto me because I'm very selective and I think it's because I'm self-sabotaging. <gasps> in what way? At what point? Tell us all. That, like, I just don't want to be in a relationship. Or, like, so, I'm okay. afraid of being in a relationship. Hence the very single. Hence the very single. Oh. Okay. okay. I think that's good to know. I just, it would be, you know, there's a lot of people that go on dates and they like everybody they date. No. And then, you know, they don't end up, if they feel like it's the other, I've that gone, no one's ever choosing them. No, I've gone on, like, amazing first dates and great second dates. And then I'm just like, okay, now I'm done. Tapped out. That was like next. good. I like Bye. that. That was good. That was fun. Okay, now next thing. Well, Thank now I next. have a question for you. If you don't hear from somebody, let's say you feel how you feel about mm-hmm. them, and then you don't hear from them, do you feel like a tinge of ego bruise because you're like, well, they should at least want me? Or are you like, you know what? I think we're on the same page. We went our separate way. Um, I mean, even if I think you're a gargoyle and you don't continue <laughs> to like harass me, then like I take offense to that. Oh. Because I live in Los Angeles and I have an ego. And you want a fan. Yeah. Doesn't. I want you to slide into my DMs and like tell me I look cute today, like all the time. Even if you like don't really want yeah. that attention from them, but like you do. Like even if I don't want to fuck you, like I want you to slide into my DMs and be like, damn, I want to hit that. And I'm yeah. like, yes, but of not course you do, but no. I actually realized recently, like yesterday when I was talking to myself, that I had a couple of dates this week, weekend, I don't know, time and space. So I had those, and then I was like, huh, do I want to go out on another date with any of them? You know, I mean, maybe I could, or like, what else? And then I was like, do they want to go on a date with me? Oh, wait, I don't think I care. If I never heard from anyone again, I'd be like, okay. Then that's good. It's good because I don't have that thing anymore. Yeah. Where, like, Mm -hmm. I'm upset, but I would say if I really liked somebody, then I'd probably be, like, a little bit offended or disappointed. Probably not offended. I'd be more disappointed but because I'd be like, man, I saw some potential there. I think that, yes, that you – that is a real thing, but sometimes it takes a little bit of time to feel that potential. So you could be in that limbo stage of, like, I don't know you well enough to put so much um, weight on, like, this turning into anything, but I also don't – you know, you still want someone to reciprocate or like you back or whatever. So you're like in between the, the, they, the, I'll limo. tell you what it is. So I actually had a conversation with my therapist about it. Shout out to therapist. Hey. See you tomorrow. Um, <laughs> and I said, so I'm super black and white. Like that's just how I am built. So that's me all day and all night. And she's like, what do you mean by that? And I was like, I am or I'm not. And she's like, oh, that makes more sense. I'm like, I don't live in gray. If I'm in gray, that's white. Because then I don't care. So I either yeah. care or I don't care. Mm-hmm. There's no, like, I semi-care. Yeah. Or I question the thing. Or I'm like, I 
could go, whatever. Like, I don't know. I'm not there. I'm always like, I strongly don't care or I strongly do care. And here are my opinions. Or I don't have any and that's the way. So anyway, the point is, with this guy or the guys, I'm like, huh. Well, I don't hate them. And I don't know if I like them. So maybe that's the correct. And maybe I do have to give them a second chance if I don't despise them. Yes, that's what I'm saying, because it's like a limbo. Right, and I don't do limbo so well, so this is where I'm like, yeah. oh, there's no real thing pointing me in any different direction. Ugh. Yeah, but I think that that's kind of healthy, because you don't want to, like, go on date number one or two and be like, yes, this is it. Like, that's how, that's yeah. not, you know. See, I interviewed Dr. Drew, which is on the new season of Hashtag Adulting, which everybody needs Damn. to listen to oh my god. this month. Plug. Interview Dr. Drew about this exact thing. Okay. And, he us, and he tells us that like when you're too when you get too excited and too interested in somebody on the first date, that's a bad sign because that means you're like love addicted and you have like an issue emotionally that you need to address in therapy. But what if you're like, placing emotion onto exactly. somebody that doesn't you don't know and doesn't deserve it? But yeah. what if you do really click? Okay, I will say this. On these dates, what I was missing was from my previous relationship that everyone heard crash and burn on the show, mm. that we had a night and like our first date where we didn't want to leave each other because we had just so much to say and it mm -hmm. was like we found each, like our best friend that we also want to make out with so like that's how that felt and i was excited and i went home and i was like man that was really fun you weren't like i'm in love with this guy no. and it, you weren't unreasonable about it but you were no. recognizing the fact that there was chemistry and you had fun and you enjoyed it. that's which is what i want i yes. want to feel like I can't get enough of this person. Where have you been all this time? I think yeah. that just having, and that is totally what, how it should be. I think allowing a little bit of a, a learning curve to happen with each dude, because it's not going to happen the same time and the same day. And every guy, you got to know that like within, yeah. within this, these parentheses, this feeling should probably occur. And if it's not happening yeah. after this amount of time, I could say I know myself well enough to say maybe it's never going to happen, but it doesn't know we need to happen on date number one or two. Well, yeah. we'll consult the therapist again tomorrow with said <laughs> experience. And before that, what else did Dr. Drew have to say? Yeah. Dr. Drew said, go for butterflies, not for names. So if you're too excited mean? and you're too like, oh my God, we're getting married, that's probably a bad sign. If you're stalking their Instagram, that's probably a bad sign. That's like, obsessive. Like, that's obsessive. And he said, that's the issue is like, we become too obsessive and then we're destroyed when things don't work out. That's why I think but like But that's my, a grenade or a butterfly? That's, that's a, a grenade. grenade. A butterfly is like, oh, this is cute. I'm looking forward to him. Like, let me tentatively plan to, you know, go so out next week or make some Don't confuse the butterflies yeah. with like, I'm in love If too. you're stalking him on Instagram, if you're like, non-stop wanting to text him you can't stop thinking about him that's a grenade butterflies like he, he maybe pops into your head like once or twice you know but you're not like obsessive about it that's why i think my strategy is smart and i go for like guys that are like emotionally unavailable or like have wives <laughs> that that definitely so gets your you results in a, a direction your type is a straight dude who is in a serious relationship <sighs> um i mean it, it's happened not intentionally, but it's no, not it, And I was like, help duh, me. that's that's my type, obviously. Yeah, obviously. I okay. like fuck boys. I like like emotionally unavailable. I like, you know, if you can't commit to me and you're texting 10 other people, then I'm like, you're at the top of my list because this means there's no real potential and you're going to break my heart and I'm used to that pattern. So, so there's nothing to really, yeah, this. there's nothing to really worry about with you because you're not really going to go there with you. You can't get hurt if you don't dive in. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, okay. right now you're just dipping your toes in the water, and maybe that's where you need to be right now. I mean, I've been there for the past 25 years, so I'm thinking okay. like maybe at some point... Oh, uh, a change like, could occur. Change. Yeah. Especially if you're, like, no longer in denial of it, and you're like, I know what it is. I then, recognized it, which is, like, the shittiest part, because I'm like, damn, now that I've recognized it, now I need to change and the And now behavior. you can't ignore it, because yeah. you can't be like, oh, I just didn't know. Now mm -hmm. you know, and so now you're just being negligent if you don't exactly. do it the right it's like when you, like don't look under your bed because you're like, I don't want to know what mess is under there. And then you finally pick up the blankets and you look under there and you're like, fuck, now I have to get the broom. Marie Kondo would Ugh, be all over that right, shit. Or the Fab Five again. I will bring them up until they come to the show. Okay. I'm Basically. down for the Fab Five. Okay. Not Marie Kondo. She just seems like a nun. She seems a little bit like a nun that might have like a I a think pal. she seems like a tiger mm -hmm. mom. Yeah, that kind of thing too. 
but anyway, her some of her shit is obviously useful and good. Um, real quick, celebrity crush. If you could have anyone who would. Um, I don't have. Okay, so I was thinking about this the other day. I don't have like a real celebrity crush, but there is like an instant, not an Instagram, like a YouTuber that I'm like oh super God. crushing on right now. His name is Mark E. Miller, and he's just like a total hunk. Let me see if I can okay, pull up his Instagram. Okay, you find him. You find him. He's just like. And is like, he type your type, like personality wise slash appearance? Sounds unavailable too. So. I mean, well, I don't know <laughs> how he available he is. He's not straight, so that's already you know off the list. Um, Damn it. Yeah. Well, so I already know it's not going to work out there. <laughs> but okay, so this is him. Oh, pass him around. Look oh, at that. Hi. Oh See, my goodness. He gracious. recently broke up with his boyfriend. He lives in like Silver Lake. Like you know, he's a he's, thing. He's cute. And everyone look him up. What is he again? He's taller. What's his, his name? name? Is Mark E. Miller. Mark Miller, but like with the E in the middle because that's his middle name. I think it's Edward. I'm not really sure. Maybe I stalked him at some point. I mean, he's Grenades. real. I don't even. Oh, he's hot. I don't even know. Look at that tattoos on the arms and the tattoos. Yeah, he has tattoos. He has ta if you scroll, like you'll find tattoos like on his thighs. No. He's just like, look at me in my underwear. Oops. Yeah. Oops. How did I get no pants? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just showing off I'm my pants tattoo. Loose. He's, he's cute. My pants are missing. Well, we like him. That could be my type. I think he could be anybody's type. Well, who, yeah, he what is your celebrity crush? Type. Oh, Justin Timberlake. I kind of keep mm, thinking you're going to yeah. say Ryan Reynolds because James, of James looks like him. I know Ryan yeah. Reynolds. I just Justin Timberlake. It's like I'm a loyal fan, so I can't say no. Fine, but I know like. that he is not like. If you just looked at his face, it's not like the most attractive face in the world. No. It's just the JT. whole thing. Yeah. 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 It's like the way he dresses and the dancing and the swag. singing. The package. It's the swag. Okay. Well, mine he has is a big package. <laughs> I actually heard otherwise, but whatever. Oh. I would actually guess the. Uh, oh, um, I the guess what? Is. Guess what? I don't care. Right. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it does a trick. It made a baby, so I I think it's. I would not complain. No. Anyway, mine is Zach Levi for those that care. Oh yes. And that okay. brings me to my next point. Mm. Word on the street is he's into some kinky shit. Mm. And since we're discussing sex yes. myths today. Mm. I thought that might be a really nice segue. He nice. apparently is into asphyxiation. And okay. I love him, oh. so I'd maybe be open to it, but I'd really rather he change. Yeah, I mean... Call me, though. I, I don't know. I've never tried it. I wouldn't be opposed to it if someone I loved wanted to do it, but, like, I don't really get it. No. I'm not into that. Are you? Um, uh, I've never tried it. I don't... I've never thought about trying it, but I mean, oh, now okay. I'm, like, questioning my life that I haven't I tried know, it. I know. Am I, like, point. real like, vanilla? Oh. Like, is it not, is it really that big of a deal? I guess it depends on how far you want to go with it. Yeah. Some people might just like the feeling of the hand Oh, see, I like that. Like, a little, like, choke me a little bit, but I don't want to, like, not be able to, like, Okay, so right. it depends on like how far it goes. Yeah, like, the, the, as, like the word asphyxiation, it which is hard to say. Scary. Like, it I, sounds like somebody's hanging themselves in the closet with, like, a right. belt. Like, like they want to lose oxygen. And not sexy. But by mm. the way, speaking of oxygen. Asphyxiation. Yeah. I um, but um, for women, I feel like oxygen is a really important thing, but we'll get yeah. there as far as myths go. I mean, men don't need it. Women do. No, it's because it's harder for some things to happen without breathing, and oh, I'm criminal yeah. for not well, breathing. We're gonna, listen, we're going to talk about some Diving. of these sentiments. You guys, common cliches are like... So men are dominant, more dominant and adventurous and emotionally unattached, and women are... Uh, you know, compliant and sexually modest and emotionally sensitive, and uh, those are myths. So we're going to talk about one of the biggest ones, men are more promiscuous than women. Now, we are heterosexual females, you Us are too. a homo, Jen and I, and you are, well, you could be a heterosexual female if you want, but I don't think that's how you Does that work? Is that, that like the antithesis of being gay is you're now a heterosexual female? I mean, he's not, if he considers himself a female. No, that doesn't I mean, work. It depends on like how you identify Jennifer. Exactly. Yeah, why did I have <laughs> a teen? Well, because you're really sticking it to the man right now. I think you, okay, so you're, <laughs> you're a homosexual <laughs> male, so yeah. you, we are both dealing with males, mm. but in different capacities, mm. but we still Those guys. Are. But I do think that males and females, no matter what uh, sex you prefer or what gender you prefer mm -hmm. to have sex with, I think there are some common threads mm -hmm. anyway. So, do you feel like men are more promiscuous than women? I think men are socially accept like it's so it's more socially acceptable for men to be more promiscuous than women, and that's the reason for that. I think that's true, but I think it's because women, you know, are you know we can't be a slut and we can't you yes. know like you get shamed for. If this were a game show, you got one. Right. I think that mm. that is what 
uh, we, you know, we found an article on um, heart, Heartalytics, Talkify Heartalytics, and it was going through some of these things. And um, while we agree, there was one thing that also mentioned that um, me, women uh, are more likely to estimate, or men are more likely to estimate their number rather mm -hmm. than women. Women are very detailed. I know the exact amount of people I slept with, mm -hmm. whereas my fiance is like, I don't know, and yeah. I think it's like this. I feel like it's like selective memory too. It's like, oh, if I don't know and keep track, then it might not have happened, and so maybe I can't get it. It's not as for important it. for men to know maybe. because they're allowed to just have sex with whoever they want and not yeah. make it look. So there's reasons why that social. Um, the social stigma, exactly. it affects yeah. everything. That's the umbrella of how it affects everything. But yeah, men are more likely to just not know their number. Do you know so, yours? No. See, I know mine. I don't know mine. I, I stopped know. counting when yeah. I realized, like, when well, I'm past, past the point of a number that I'm interested <laughs> so in talking yeah. about. But also, like, also, this is the other thing, and this drives me bananas, but we'll, when, why are we keeping track? So, when someone says to you in a relationship, or maybe when you just start dating or whatever, how many people have you been with? The answer should be none yet. None yeah, your fucking none your business. business. Yeah. Because what difference does it make? I mean, I some mean, people yeah. just asking for curiosity. Yeah. I just asked my fiance because I just wanted to know. I don't. I actually don't really give a fuck. Well, you are a curious person, like a normal. I am a yeah. curious person, and it's not going to make you feel icky because you also did whatever you did. I, it doesn't make me feel icky. It doesn't bother me at all. I'm not weird about it. Sometimes I'll make him tell me about it. Like what he said, he had a threesome one time. I'm like, what? I need to know. And then what? I'm like, oh my god, you're such a fucking stud. It's ah. like, yeah, and then this girl, and then this girl. I'm like, that's oh my fucking gosh. awesome. Yes, I think yeah. it's, look, I don't care. I'm like, good. I'm glad you were, you were a stud. It kind of makes me feel like, yeah, he's a fucking stud. Yeah. And then also, like, good, so you your fucking oats, because Do now we're getting married. Yeah. So, like, time to... Get it all out, so you, there's nothing you're still thinking about and, like, still want to try. And also, great, you got all that practice mm -hmm. done, and now you're and great. And now you're really going to so, lay to me. Sweet. So, speaking of, like, multiple partners and things like that, we're, we did want to kind of touch on our personal questions for you two, like mm. fuck boys and things like that. Mm. Um, and, and, but one of them is like juggling men. Mm. Do, are you good at that? Ha, and if you are, and, and this can be in any capacity, like sleeping with more than oh one dude, God, dating so more than bad. one dude. Are you good at it? Do, and how do you do it if you are good at it? Because juggling men. Also, I am single, so I can yeah. weigh in on this yes. point too. No, all, so. or, and I have been single too, and I have yeah. done that. She was better at it. See, but this is so bad. I mean, because well, now you ask me questions and I have to answer it. But the thing is, like, there are so many guys that slide into my DMs or that I text and that I date. Yes, I do juggle many different guys, not many different guys, but I do have a rotation. I think that's smart. You have, like, the guys that are. Think of it like as a stove, you have the guys that are like on really high burners and then the ones that you kind of simmer in the background and you just constantly keep the rotation going. And it, see, the smart strategy, all the guys that DM me that are listening to this right now are probably going to be upset that they're not exclusive and they think that they are. Sorry, but you're not. But the thing is... But do you tell you them to, they are? You don't tell them they are. No, I just they need just, them to believe that they are. Okay, fine, but until you tell them, you're not lying. Yeah. So exactly. the thing is, like, the intention is so that you don't get hung up on just one guy. It's like not putting all of your eggs in one basket. You you sure. want to make sure you're constantly rotating you're... and balancing it around keep and keeping yourself up. busy so that you're not constantly texting all of them because the less and you turning text, into the a grenade into and right. then the, and then they're all butterflies. Mm -hmm. You're diversifying your butterfly portfolio. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's really smart adulting, in fact, because of stocks and stuff. I love that analogy too. That is how you juggle everyone. Oh, I'm putting people on the burner. Also, I have a really hard time with. Um, juggling more than one because I like forget what I told one I also mm. like if I don't care about one it's like weird to go through the motions for me and yeah, I'd rather like, just Ugh. sit with my dog yeah. on the couch yeah. and watch obviously but that's a good queer run. that's a good test for you like to juggle to help the cream rise to the top yeah I mm -hmm. love idioms these are great see Keep and that going. and that the cream rising to the top is a cooking thing too so yeah. see, it's food we're cooking up we're some cooking love some love on this love. episode um, okay so <laughs> Uh, men want sex more than women do. True that is a long-standing assumption, guys. Um, I think, again, I think it goes to the social stigma, partially, but I also think men are, well, I will say, that, like, for me as a male, I don't always, like, want sex. Like, I go through periods where, like, I don't even have sex with myself for, like, weeks at a time because I'm just, like, not sexually interested. Yeah. So I think it depends on the Is it usually if you're busier or stressed or, like, just... Busy or stressed. It. Yeah, I think a combination of all of those three things. 
And I think it all goes back to like feeling good and sexy. Like when you feel that way, you want to do those things. If you don't, you're like, oh, get away from me. Like, I don't, or just even with you. Yeah. Like if you're talking about masturbation, whatever you're talking about, like none of that feels good or sexy. If you don't feel sexy, like yeah. you have to feel good. And sometimes there's things that tiredness and things like that. that or just, like you're like, again, talking about like female anatomy and the way things work. Sometimes if your head's not in it, and you've got a lot going on, you're just not going to want to go there. Yeah. Same thing with men, though. Like, if they've got, like, work on the brain or financials on the brain or whatever it is, like, oftentimes their head's not in it, right? So, like... See, but at the same time, I also feel like men use sex as, like, a way to, like... They could. De-stress. Also, the, I th it could be a myth, too, but I feel like I've heard from life and my guy friends, guys break up with girls and they're sad they go out and fuck other yeah. girls. Women don't always do that because it's more of an emotional thing they have to deconfect they don't feel like having sex because they're sad and whereas men it's like that it's, it's like a, a stress concord. reliever yeah it's a stress release it's it's a concord yes. it's like i feel out of control so i just need to fuck a bunch of women so that i feel like a man yeah, yeah. yeah. and it makes Not sense too belt. even like you're saying jen with just the anatomy a man puts his penis inside of something mm -hmm. and lets something go mm -hmm. that's a stress a reliever release. we're right. like receiving the energy so we have to be in a place Place to receive that mm. kind of a thing so I think and breathing of, maybe not asphyxiated and not being asphyxiated because that no. is maybe not what you want but that no. assumption you guys Somebody that men might. want more sex than women do comes from the notion that like men pounce on their first opportunity to have sex or that women are like I have a headache or they're like less apt to being more um, open to having sex because there's all these sexually like these claims that they're like, no, I don't, yeah. I'm not in the mood. Or and I think we fall into these roles because we think that's how it's supposed to be. Like men feel like they're supposed to fuck a bunch of women because so then like they that's do what it. they're supposed to do right. to be a man. And then a woman's like, I can't be slutty or I can't be promiscuous because that's not right. So I, you know, don't want to do this right now. Yeah. And it's actually also not true. Uh, men, women and men like to have just as much, much sex there. It's equal. Yeah. And I, I also think it depends on you know, uh, your sexual prime is earlier for man and later for a woman. So mm -hmm. it also depends on what stage of your life you're in, but still. Exactly. And also there are like different disorders and things that keep things from working yeah. or slowing things down. Um, like libido, depending on medicines you're taking mm -hmm. and mental state, again, going back to that. And yeah. also like there's a hypoactive sexual desire disorder that women might get and same like a me men might get men like can ED. Get them too. Yeah. So, so all all kinds things of that, things. But one sex yeah. does not want sex more than the other sex. That's How many times can we say sex in this show? It should be a drinking all game. All the time. Everybody take a shot. shot. Um, guys. And go have sex. Sorry, okay, this is like <laughs> a small one, but like it's actually kind of cool to touch on that. A birth control is the woman's responsibility. And that, so this no. might not relate to obviously your experience because you don't have to worry no, about protection it. Is you still can, an important protection thing. Absolutely. and sexually transmitted diseases is definitely a thing. But okay, so let's just talk about protection for you. Mm -hmm. Is it someone's responsibility versus the other person's Especially if you're a bottom and one's a top. I think it's personal responsibility. Like, if you don't want to get an STD, you make sure you always have, like, a condom handy. Even if you aren't the one that's going to be wearing it. Correct. And that's Because what, that's your own accountability and, like, taking care of your own body. That is exactly what ding, ding, ding. we all say here, too. Yeah. If, drink, you're, drink, drink. if you're a man oh, and you're having sex more. with a woman and you don't want her to get pregnant, then you either have the condom for yeah. yourself or if that's you're beyond that point, you can remind her to take the pill every day. Gently though, don't be weird about it and like no. be a, a question. Did you take you would discuss, sergeant. would you like me to help you remind you? And if yeah. the answer is yes, then you send a text every day or you yeah. set an alarm on your phone. I almost made James do that for me. Yeah. And you have to like both be on the same page of being like, this we don't want Right, pregnant. Right, right. So we and it's not to cute to risk it, yeah. and it's not cute to then worry for a month and then have to go get in a bobo. Like it's just not. And yeah. ladies, so let's be adults. Ladies, you have condoms to give the man because you know we, we have all met that guy. We have all met that guy mm -hmm. that's like, oh, I can't come when I'm wearing a condom. Right, or uh oh, I don't have one, oh, and then still wants to do it anyway. But like, no, just don't. Yeah. And carry two variations because then you're gonna find the one that's allergic to latex. Or well, I need magnums. Oh. Okay. Uh, I don't think right. so, honey. No, no, you don't. You don't. Um, but You're also, gonna be okay. It's not going gonna back choke to, your penis. Oh my god, going back to stigmas. <laughs> <laughs> going back to stigmas. Um, having condoms doesn't make you a slut if you're a girl. Just because you have them doesn't make you a slut, nope. and that you do it all the time. 
And it if just you makes you are prepared. doing it all the time, that also doesn't make you a slut. No. no Both those things. You you responsible do adult because you know what you want and you're protecting yourself and your body. Right. We're trying to make your life a little less baby complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that thing. Okay. So guys, mm -hmm. I keep hinting at this one. It was obviously the one I was most excited about. Mm -hmm. Myth. Women easily orgasm through penetration. Nope, false. Nope. I was going to open it up to Zach to see if he had an answer, but Zach. Lauren is the false police. I mean, I would probably say that because I've heard that, like, no, yes. there's, like, it's, like, one, I've heard that it takes, like, at least, like, 15 to 20 minutes to warm up the oven. Like, you need to preheat things. Heck yeah. And then you really like these cooking analogies, huh? <laughs> and then once the burners are up on the stove and going, you gotta rotate the fucking pans you around. Have to rotate, you have to hit all the buttons, you have to hit, you have to add all the ingredients. Mm -hmm. yes. You might even want to remind her to breathe because sometimes we forget. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Like, okay. Well, it's probably because you're white tense and you're whole, but no. Uh, I'm like, you, is this happening? Is yeah. this happening? When's this gonna happen? Guys, oh wait, are you in me yet? What? Oh, oh you yeah, already are you came. There? What? Justin Timberlake, is that you? <laughs> uh, nearly 35% of men marked that they think that this is true, that women easily orgasm through penetration. So guess what? Yeah. You guys are wrong. And 80% um, of women admit to faking an orga orgasm during intercourse. Also, nice. they're not doing anybody any services here. No, Don't right. lie. No. Especially about that, then you're training the dog to do the wrong trick. And then we get stuck with those people that don't know what they're doing, unlike yeah. James, who might have had a menage a trois. Or two. Or two. Or two. Whatever. The point is, is that yourself. women need constant clitoral stimulation in order to orgasm during sex. And guess what? That's probably not happening during penetration, so figure out how to do it, because that's what we need. And I don't give a fuck if some girl is like, I always have an orgasm during sex. That's because you're stimulating your clitoris. Yeah. I don't want to hear any of this bullshit. Don't make any other woman feel bad yeah. about like, I don't, that doesn't happen for me. I seriously thought something was wrong with me forever. I mean, it's a matter of like knowing your body and then being able to like talk about it in bed. Like you have to be willing to have a conversation because I think there's, there's too much, um, you know, like, I don't want to upset you. I don't want you to feel uncomfortable, even though, like, you're putting yourself inside of me or, like, whatever it is. Like, you have to be willing to have a conversation about sex. What you funny. want. Yeah. No, it was funny. I was I was having sex one time, and this guy's like, are you okay? Are you feeling good? I'm like, yeah. I'm, like, with you in bed. Like, I'm like, oh, right, that's right. We're in, like, this age of consent where, like, we have to, like, always check in with people. He's like, no, I think consent has, like, always been a thing. He's yeah. like, you oh. should be having these conversations every time you're having sex. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, you're right. Good call. But, but you also, what happened to this guy? Yeah, but he also, great. you don't want someone constantly checking because then no, it feels no, 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 like yeah. something, you're, you may, am I doing something wrong that you're misinterpreting? Yeah. Because yeah. it does take you out of the moment. Yeah. But I do like the concern and care. Mm hmm And so that what happened to that guy, though? I don't know. What do you mean? I don't... I think he was, like, a... Was this yoga guy? No, 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 no it was not yoga guy. I think this was, um, like, I was out of town. You were? Yeah. Like and you I, never came Because I go out of town, and, like, I find regular guys that I see when I go out of town. Oh, I like oh. it. So he's not, like, a here in Los Angeles I realistic see. potential. Got it. Ooh, I love this, that's though. That's fun. You're, like, vacation fuckboys. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I'm into it. Strategy. I'd into be it. totally down with that. I met a guy in Bali. Do you like how like all of my dating and sex life is like strategy. Well, it should be. And efficiency. You have a plan. And I met a guy when I was in Indonesia in Bali, and he was actually from like San Clemente. Mm. And so we went on another date when I got home. But he was pretty cute. He was a surfer. But he's like, my dad's a surfer, and I have a really hard time going down that. It's weird. Mm. I can't. Mm. Sounds like a lot to talk about. It's not. It sounds like a family business. It's, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. My dad's a surfer, like, it's a fucking job. He's please. hiring. <laughs> yes, it is. Like, well, surfer, a real surfer, it's like their life. Well, yeah. You don't just, like, kind of, it's like, if you're, you're, it's a black and white like you, Jen. You either fucking surf and it is your life, or you don't at all. You, just, you don't you dabble. You can't claim it. There's no dipping the toes in the surfing water. Mm -hmm. You're in it, catching a wave and hanging. No, okay, I'm sorry. If I see a guy <laughs> on a dating app just, that does this. Yeah, no. No, 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 no real surfer does that. No, no I don't. It, at it, least I don't think. It no. kills me because I'm like, just put your hand down. Yeah, Why is your hand in it? Yeah. I'm not doing like thumbs up in every the photo. Shaka. He's no. cool. So I don't know. Cool. It's definitely yeah, not. No, no, I once had a, a moment of weakness where I was in Ventura, California. And there's not a lot happening in Ventura, California. Except for surfing. Except for surfing. And there was a guy, and he even had frosted tips yeah. in like today's age. And it's like... I mean, no. the frosted tips are the biggest, like, don't go there sign. Yeah. And I went there. 
Well, seems really on trend. You were for you. making what on worked brand, even. in your vicinity work for you. Yeah, I mean, of of the options, like you have to play to your pool. And Destination of the dating. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, well, I mean, you're yeah. clearly killing it. So yeah. Now, our final myth. Mm. Are you ready? Yeah. Men are more sexually adventurous than women. Like possibly, in the bed with asphyxiation. Maybe. No, I think it's the opposite. What? I mean, I think, men, I think men like to think that they are or like to want to be because again, it's social construct, but I think men are actually, at least based on my, off of my experience, and I've slept with a lot of men because that's Great. all I sleep with. But, but a number you cannot remember. Have you ever had sex it. with a woman? No. Have you ever wanted to? No. Uh, yeah, I mean, I thought about it. Would you? Probably. I like it. I like that you're now we know. I mean, it's not going to not feel good. Yeah. Like, Once I you're mean, in the vagina and doing the things, it's going to feel good. Like, I wouldn't, like, randomly hook up with, like, some random woman like I would a guy. But, yeah. like, if the opportunity were to happen, like, I wouldn't be against it. But I'm, like, somebody that doesn't really say no to anything. And I also like that about Same. Women. Very open. You guys, yes. Oh. This is a societal standard again. It's, like, setting the tone that women are emotional and men are physical. So, like, that undertone is there, that, like, men will explore sex on a much higher degree than women will because they're, like, ready to pounce all the time and they're conquesting and they yeah. want, they're the hunter and you're the gatherer, whatever, not the gatherer, but... <laughs> we're, we're just, we're always in distress. We are gathering, though. That is how women, um, that is how women communicate. They gather things in a basket and they're, like, all, I have this basket of things and guys don't do that. So no, we but also, kind of like we gather, um, bodily fluids sometimes, too. Mm. Don't forget it. Like when somebody ejaculates when the pee goes in the V, yes, or in other things, and then the thing comes out. I mean, yeah, they, there's it's gathering. Like, it's we're ga oh, that is the gatherer. I understand what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, if you're the bottom in a relationship with a man, you're a gatherer too, I guess. Yeah. See, it's there. It goes when the pee goes, goes in the thing. It is gotta go somewhere, and then gravity happens, and then they grow. Listen, so it works, then you know? it seeps out really slowly. And it's not fun. And it gets like stinky the longer later, it's in there. Allow hour later. I don't really want that still. It's anyway. I don't um, want to take home. No <laughs> doggy it's, bag, it's please. It's a souvenir. It's, it's not cute. Yeah. If that souvenir came with like a diamond ring or like yeah. a home. Mm -hmm. Hello. Exactly. It works sometimes. Um, <laughs> men are so not funny. more sexually adventurous. No. Again, it's a myth. It's true. There's a lot of a lot of people don't know this fact, but one third of women watch porn on a weekly basis, and 92 percent of women ages 18 to 22 masturbate regularly. They just don't talk about it. See, I don't watch porn at all. I don't like porn. But it doesn't. It's not like a gender thing. Yeah, it's, it's just not right. a gender yeah. thing. It's a person thing. Right, and you know what's the most annoying thing? Also, assumptions. Like, yeah, uneducated people. Yeah, like some guys, in my experience, have said. So, like, do you watch porn? And I'm like, or, like, what porn do you watch? I'm like, I don't watch porn. I'm like, of course you do. Everyone does. I'm like, I hate you. You're obviously. And even if you did, everyone does is stupid to say. Like, if Ever. you, my fiance does not like watching porn. He's not, like, morally against it. He's like, it just doesn't do it for me. So, I don't, I mean, if I see, like, a sexy scene, it's not going to not turn me on. But I don't yeah. seek porn out. I don't, it's like, I'm whatever about it. But it's stupid to say everyone does this thing. Yeah. It makes me want to punch him because he's also probably the guy that thinks that, like, you could blow on a vagina and then it has an orgasm. Like, yeah. it's not that easy. But he knows the trick, Jen. Obviously. He knows the trick. He he's knows the how one. to blow. Yeah. Well, the point about mitigating all of these myths, you guys, is that when you do that, it allows you to be closer to your partner or more open to maybe discovering what you like sexually for yourself or when you don't have these myths and you don't just categorize it oh well this happens because I'm a woman or because he's a man like let those things go and think about what you really like and going over all these things just helps a little for all of us to know we're kind of like all on the same playing mm -hmm. field there are differences between men and women for the most part and human to human yeah we want the same things we want to have a connection and we want to feel good and sometimes one it's one of those things or sometimes it's both mm -hmm. and sometimes it's asphyxiation I can't even say it and sometimes it's that which anyway also fuck boys now just yeah. we've brought this up a little bit mm -hmm. before we before we end we do want to touch on this because this is a real thing for all of the parties here mm -hmm. and has been 
Um, first of all, the definition is an asshole. This is Urban Dictionary. Asshole boy who is into strictly sexual relationships. He will lead a person on and let them down, then apologize only to ask for pictures once the girl has welcomed him back into her trust. Girl or guy. Girl or guy. Boys like this will pretend to genuinely care about a girl or guy, but always fail to prove this supposed this supposed affection. This this definition goes on, but that's the basic mm. a definition of a fuck boy. Do you have any of these in your life, or are you that? See, I think I have in the past, and even maybe recently, have like identified eighty percent as like a fuck boy. Whereas, like, I definitely will keep guys in the rotation, even though I know for a fact I will not like mm-hmm. date you or even have sex with you again. But I won't shut it down, which I know is awful. Um, yeah, but I definitely. Uh, a fuck boy is my type because it's emotionally unavailable and it's just like a conquest that I'm never going to achieve. When do you get rid of a, when are you done with a fuck boy? Like what's the draw, what's the, the boundary? For when you? it's been like two years and he hasn't responded to like any of my 85 text messages. Okay, oh that's my goodness. a lot. That's wow. a big window there. Yeah, wow, you really are persistent though. I mean, it depends. I think a fuck boy is fine if that's what you want them to be. But once you start to go into the mode of, I want something else from you, even if it's more or less, then that's when you draw the line. And I've been through enough fuck boys that I've been at the place where I'm just like, okay, I know this may be cold and brash, but I just want you to know that like, I don't want this to go any further. So like, we need to cut this off. Like, I know it may have just been sex, but I don't want to have communication with you because I don't want to lead you on and I see you getting led on right now. And you actually say those words to someone. Yes, Yes, I I love that. And I that is hashtag no filter, hashtag adulting, See, hashtag people, killer. They're like, uh, uh, and they get all offended about it. I'm like, but would you rather me continue to lead you on for like another six months? You're doing know. them a favor legitimately and not just like a cliche. I like, honestly, well, whatever, I was not into you anyway. Oh, yeah. well, you so did for chat. Jack off to my pics. Yeah, and exactly. then let me know in my DMs because I need the bell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, can't love you, bye. I am all about it. I think a fuckboy is only bad if you let it get to that point. Yeah. Otherwise, if they're, they are what they are. They like, are. If you what? want a little fun fuckboy for See, like... It's, it's, it's bad because there's like... Okay, I'll tell you about Tony the Tiger. <gasps> yes! Tony the Tiger wanted me to come over to cuddle. Okay. Why can't he just say what he means? See, but he was very serious. He's like, just cuddle. no sex. Oh, like, no. no sex. We are just going to cuddle. Okay. And so I'm like, okay. Like, I'm down with that. Like, I'm cool if we just cuddle. We didn't just cuddle. Yeah, because... Definitely. Are you sure he really meant that? Because I've been told somebody wants to cuddle he a lot, and then it's always when I'm meaning sex. See, that's what I assumed, but he was, like, very serious it about it. It more exciting. And was like, I need to be clear with you yeah. that there is no sex happening tonight. And, and then, then it sex did. happened. And then, um, and then he's like, I want to see you again. Of course I want to see you again. Why wouldn't I want to see you again? And then he never ended up seeing me again, but he continues to, like, watch my Instagram stories. But Wait, doesn't did even you want to see him again? I mean, I would have. It wasn't bad sex. Oh. I mean, and now that I know, like, where we're at, then I'm yeah. like, okay, yeah, I hit it again. Um, Is it because of the challenge? Probably. <laughs> but, let's be honest. But mm-hmm. he would watch, like, my Instagram stories and, like, doesn't even follow me on Instagram. Like, it was just such a bizarre thing, but then, like, wouldn't see me again, and now he's apparently, like, seen somebody... It's just Why like, is he Tony the Tiger? Isn't he girl? Oh, that's his Instagram name. Right. Oh, oh well, my God. I don't know if anybody's interested. Slide into his DMs. I mean, but he spells, he spells it a special way, so I don't think people will figure it out. Oh, now it's a challenge. Oh. Um. So. All right. Your new season mm. of hashtag adulting returns April twenty third, mm. and our episode of hashtag no filter drops when today. Oh my goodness. Or guys. tomorrow. Now, you can listen, as whenever this is out, you can listen to the new episode of Hashtag Amazing. Netflix, right? Okay, Both great. Videos. Well, we're on it. And we're talking about similar things. Similar so it's like, topics. Maybe listen to that first and then listen to ours, because this is yeah. like part two, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. And or, we, I mean, whatever. Whatever order you would like. And you guys, you don't, we'll not make a you company. Can move, you live your life. You, you can move the, the pans around on top of the stove in whatever order The pans or like. the podcast. Whatever you got going on. Rotate guys. them, replay them. Yeah, we dig deep. You know, one in the morning, one at night. Yeah, my complicated situations that you guys give me advice on because I have a lot of complicated dating situations. I'm a lot of like psychos that continue to text me. I think you love it. Read them. You welcome them in. I love it because then it gives you material for my show. I think so. And don't you love a fan? Read. Yeah. Subconsciously, that's why you're doing it. Probably. Right. It's fine. 
at yeah. least there's a reason there's something. I put somewhere. myself in so many different scenarios. Like I went speed dating this year. I did a live stream blind date this year, which I just found out aired on like Cartoon Network when somebody texted me and was like, oh my God, I just saw you on this show. And I was like, oh, I had no idea they were broadcasting it on TV, but I guess that's why you should read the releases you've signed. Whoops. Oh, okay. Oh okay. my so God, a live stream blind date. Yeah, where like the internet watches you <gasps> and then comments Wait, and I votes did that. during the day. I did that once. You did? For a show on current TV. Mm. Wow, looks yeah. like that's a thing now. This everyone. was many years ago, in fact. So, wow, it's still a wow, thing. The I love kids it. are doing that today. It's digital. We're getting digital. Mm. Digital get down. So, speaking of the kids, what is one piece of advice you can share to help make everyone's lives a little less complicated, mm. especially for the kids that might be listening for, you know, because they, they got things to do? You know, I think so many of us, like, want somebody else to give us the answers, and they think that, like, somebody else, a guru, an expert, an Instagram moto, that they're going to, like, have the answer to whatever our life, whatever our life problem is, and I think, like, we need to stop relying on other people to give us those answers, and we need to realize, like, we already have that answer within ourselves. You just need to be brave enough to ask yourself whatever the question is, and not be afraid of whatever the answer is, because you already have, you already know what you want. You already know if you want to be married. You already know if you love this guy. You already know if you, you know, have an STD. You already know. <laughs> if you're itchy. Yeah, you that's a pretty know. good sign. Hello. Um, and this is like how you determined and realized that you might be part of the problem. Hmm. Oh, your... I'm, I'm like always part of the problem, for sure. We all are. We all are part of the problem. It's the village. The solution. We're yes. the village. That's a really good show, by the way, on NBC. If you're oh. all worried. Oh, it looks yeah, like, so stupid, cute. but okay. It's cute. It's pretty feel good. There's like their things, but it's cute. Okay. Well, There's, it's about love, love guys. So. Okay, well then, then in that case. Yeah. Love happens. Love wins, you guys. Love always love. wins. And we love you, Zach. So please remind everyone where they can find you so they can love you back. Yes, you can follow me all over the internet at Just Plain Zach. That's my handle. And I have two podcasts. Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter and hashtag Adult Teen Life Hacks Get Your Shit Together on all major podcast networks. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's just the best. Just solving everybody's problems with one, one in podcast. The AM, one in the PM. And speaking <laughs> of podcasts, you guys can tune into our podcast every week for all new episodes. And next week we have our guest, Dahlia Karnofsky, the host of Not Your Therapy, Not Your Therapist Oops. podcast. And um, it, it's going to be good, guys, because I think she's going to give it to us fucking straight. And I like that. I like her. I like her speed. So listen to her podcast if you want, and then tune in for ours. We're going to mash up and become master daters together and you can follow us at complicated show on all of the places you listen to your podcast all over the intranet and all the social medias um and guys don't forget to rate and comment on our show tell a friend leave us your favorite moment ask us a question provide lauren wedding advice provide me a date set me up with your brother i don't know guys but comment yeah and guys where can well guys lauren where can people find you at not jen on all the, at Lauren Lee and Ellie on all the social medias I did. Who is that person? I don't know. Me, I don't know. Same person. Was it uncomfortable to say it? Weird. Weird. Yeah, I defaulted again. <laughs> well, guys, you can follow me at Jennifer Golden on all the social medias as well and dating sites and just walking the street. And dating sites and bopping around. Bopping. Town. Bopping. And if you see someone bopping, it's me. It's Jen, <laughs> so DM her. And Slide into my DMs. Or meet me in real life and bop back. And bop. Be, instead of speed day. dating, it's going to be bop, bop dating. <laughs> Baiting. I don't know. Anyway, okay. Well, uh, we'll be back next week for more discussion on bopping and not bopping. And we will see you guys then. Thank you so much for tuning in. Love, Love you on time. time.